Welcome back, everybody. This is the second match we're about to go live. It is Livid versus Polar A's, two teams that we're pretty quite familiar with. Mike, I think we're ready to see some action. I believe the map is trained, if I'm not mistaken. And you, I mean, you said it. Op GM. Op GM. I'm pretty excited. AGM <laughs> is, a, is a man who can really go off on this map. I've seen it before uh, plenty of times on LAN, online. So I'm excited to see that at the server. He's obviously the newest addition to the Polar Ace roster, and we're going to see them in action right away as we are into the game. It's going to be them starting out on the CT side, so we should see that op in form early. And it looks like it's going to be four players pushing into the B halls from Livid as they try and gain ground. There's a player pushed up that is base who can be very deadly, and as I try and get around his USP, he may have opportunity for a bit of a blindside fight, especially as his teammate takes the aggro and sets him up beautifully for a quick couple of kills. He'll only find the two, but he did damage onto the third, so this is looking good. Or rather, no damage onto the third. That's Jonah P, who's knocked down low, but the quick flank is on. Billy was in reserve to make sure that that didn't get too deadly, and now Incred's bailing them out of it. Two players still alive. They're going to group. Only one of them, actually, rather, neither of them has armor. So they're both going to be very vulnerable indeed. But they're going to go ahead and try and make this attempt. And it looks like they're eventually going to decide to settle on towards B. Yeah, I like the decision. I like the patience from Livid right now. They don't need to force the matter. They can wait for the re-aggression. They can see if anything is coming out. I wonder if they're going to clear Jonah P off from upper. Because if they don't, that's going to be a big, big problem for the Frenchies. I don't think they're expecting another player in this position at all, right? He assumed the spot that his dead teammate was playing, and that's the bomb. Now Millie's in such a tough spot. He has to force this. Has to just wow. go for it. That's a beautiful shot from Jonah P. Just lines up the angle and swings, and he's right on the money. That's a nice way to get your pistol round finished off and get your game started here for Polar Ace. The, uh, the, the CT side of train, of course, can be so difficult to deal with if you let them build up that bank, if you let them get the guns up for early. Sure. They're just so hard to, to dig out and unentrench. Yeah, definitely. Now, this is Polar Race's first attempt to kind of get that economy rolling, right? So they can get those AUGs, they can get those AWPs up, the bread and butter of train, of course. But I really do like the early kind of like mixture of aggression and discipline coming out from Polar Race already. That's interesting to see. Livid right now trying to bait whatever utility they can to make this bomb plan possible. Because, of course, that is all they're really aiming for in this round. If it unfolds differently after that, then so be it. But the objective is that cash, cash, money. I think Picky might have an opportunity to uh, pick up a little bit of that cash, cash money, print some bills of his own. They've got SMGs poised at two potential exit points, one down below ladder, one just waiting for them at the ramp. Then you've got the range taken care of on the one farmers. This could be a bit of a slaughter, folks, although the timing could be deadly here. They're swapping back to throw a little bit of utility, and now the swing's going to come out upper. They've got a single flashbang to make this happen, but they've got to just take the fight. Picky is here ready to feast. He might get run down, but they can't get the plant. That's going to delay them. That's the bomb drop as well. So they'll eventually get wrapped on. But Jonah P should be here for the alley oop and the setup. Oh. They nearly got the numbers punched in, but base was fast enough on the flank to make sure that wasn't going to happen. So no money extra for Livid. Yeah, that was a oh. great shot, on. Look at the look at the op coming out immediately for the T side. Yeah, even even the SG for when when's a SG main by the way. He's uh, pretty comfortable oh, yeah. with that weapon. And it, it is honestly a weapon that's kind of like underutilized in my opinion on, on in the CS:GO meta currently. But I think on maps like Train Overpass where you kind of want to find these long range engagements and these one taps from a distance, it's a pretty good weapon for that. Here we go though. Early aggression coming out early from Polar Ace. And they're aiming towards Tcon. It's always a little bit awkward, but if you have the utility for it, it is a good spot of the map to own early on. Now, Livid needs to have some sort of response because they have lost a big, crucial part of the A offense. It's going to take them so long to clear that back out if they have to do it or if they ultimately decide to. And there's smoke still here. The advantage was always the utility for Polar <laughs> Ace, and they boldly Livid with it. Now, with full control over towards Tcon, they can adjust their expectations elsewhere and that's gonna be base swinging back in there's the krieg the sg back in the hands of the cts or in the hands of the cts for the first time rather and now they've got every advantage in the books they had to sort of compensate for their slightly inferior weaponry by using that utility to bully various positions to just make life hell for the remaining t's and push them back that's a great way to get started yeah, I agreed with that. And it's a great flash coming out from AGM for that ladder control as well. But Jonah P's big ass legs have been spotted and he's been taken down by Millie. So it's the man advantage taken away and it's 30 seconds left. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's pretty much an A commitment at this point. They don't really have the time to fall back. And there it is. A B aggression has been taken out. So that is going to put a wench. A wrench, I should I... say. 
But yeah. I really do like that, that that reaction just to have the flank secured. They could have almost swung off it, but you're right. Time is so slow. They would have had to go all the way back around. It's not possible. Base is going to catch one coming through smoke as he kind of just materializes right in front of him. And there's players close enough. They might even be able to deny the plant. He's at least going to get the planter as he comes off. And there's no opportunity for a refrag. Now it's just Mikhail. He's got to find so many, but Picky's tapping him down through the smoke. Mikhail has to completely reassess the angle and find a different position to play from, but he's going for the clutch and he's finding enough time. Picky doesn't have a kit. He may be able to retrieve one off of his teammates, but he's got to win this fight quickly. And on the swing, it's just going to be Mikhail toying with him, picking him down bit by bit to low health. And Mikhail! Oh, oh I thought he had it. He didn't quite have the last shot. Does Picky have this on the full 10 second? Uh, I believe he does. Yeah, he... When he closed, but he... Oh wow! That's a that's a pucker defuse right there. Wow 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 wow! There's so many things there that I was just my I was like my butt was very clenched there. But man, that was very well played by Mikhail. It's really unfortunate because he took a lot of that early damage through the smoke spam. That's unfortunate. And he got he really got no help from the RNGs at all either. There, I mean, he full he went for the full spray, not a single bullet connected. That's a bit unfortunate. But Polar Ace coming out on top, 3-0 lead, so it's pretty comfortable. Expensive round nonetheless, but. Hey, at least they have Livid down to an eco. So fourth round ready to be taken here by Polar Ace, who have the big advantage here with, the, of course, the full weapons, the full kits, as well as the utility. Flashbang is coming down. as Livid is on their way to the Orthe A site. This is a good approach, though. They completely circumvent that off angle. The problem is they line up for the rifles. And now it's just Millie, who's barely got any health whatsoever and he will eventually find the off so eight strikes twice in the round and it's a really nice crossfire i like the idea from livid you set up the smokes you circumvent that op fight you give yourself a chance to get towards a bomb train but the counter setup from polar ace is really nice having the player by e-box having the player in towards the ladder room they can set up a, a really gnarly crossfire combined with the players playing ivy and you just destroy them on entry uh, so a little bit of a of a back and forth here and Livid haven't quite really put the feet down, but now they got rifles and they've already lost it. Wow, what a wow. shot by Jonah P and AGM is doubling down towards Ivy, not letting this round get out of control. Mikhail forced into an uncomfortable situation, but it's going to be win to draw one player back in their direction. And that is, I mean, this is before a minute 30 and your four of your teammates are dead. One of them is pinned to the wall. You can see in Win's cross here right there, but <laughs> that just, that's just, that's, that yeah, that's hard. So that's rough. Livid. You're like, all right, this is the round, boys. We got this. We're ready. We got guns up. We got our plan. Oh, no, everyone's dead. Quinn, though, might be uh, adding some casualties of his own. He's now dropped a second in the round. He's getting aggressive with the op on towards sight. He's got a minute, so at least there's time to work with. And a smoke as well might be able to secure him at least a plant. But he's going for the full hero play. He's trying to isolate another fight. And he may not realize there's two players back here. One person for Ivy, one around the train. It won't matter. Picky finds the timing outside of Tcon and catches him in the back. So it's all shut down. A nice effort at the end. A valiant attempt. It's just a little too little too late for Libra to get anything going. Yeah, for sure. At least he got some of the economy out of Polar Ace's hands, though. That's going to help a tiny little bit. And... I mean, Huynh had a really good, pretty good plan in mind. I really like that. He tried to isolate the targets one by one. He knew he could probably find one more towards Ivy. Had it not been for that, that flank. Yeah, I definitely like the idea. As you said, he was he was the right move. Sometimes when you're one v three, though, you just kind of gotta trust and hope for the best. Absolutely. And sometimes that trust betrays you. Uh, we are seeing aggression up the halls once again, and it's a very passive setup from Livid. They are waiting to see if that initial aggression comes out before they throw their utility on towards A. It's looking like they're going to set it for the smokes A, but I'm not sure they're necessarily going to fully commit to it. They only got this one run of utility, so it's either going to be a straight commitment or it's going to be a pump fake. And as the CT utility starts to fade, now we should see the move come in. Let's see if they have any success this time agm is pretty aggressive with this off he's gonna be past their smokes but he misses the first shot and that will afford them opportunity in Amali's gonna go down to secure the angle and now he's playing the close up shots with the awp hits one can he find more he's bottlenecked them and there's the second shot and the third agm quick flicking with the speed scope and melio gets two but is silenced by a flying he so the off reign supreme polar ace lock it down once again as the push out t-con gets decimated on arrival off gm he's sitting at eight and one already uh, going on the seventh round that's a pretty good ratio if i've ever seen one but man livid i, I would like to see that flashbang come in just a tiny little bit sooner 
might have saved one of their players from taking that early initial engagement or at least fatality rather but here it is living once again they have not had much success towards the a site so they're gonna try their luck towards b jonah p and picky bit of a crossfire setup jonah p and picky find one each missed shot from jonah but picky's there for the support not letting him fall Melio finds the first one and the second one he's opened up the b site but the reinforcements it has arrived mike I love that combo play from the two. They really have each other's backs. That allows those two players to stay alive for much longer, considering the positioning. Livid's still going to be able to get a bomb plant out of here, but this utility damage all around them is making life so very difficult. And now the reaggression can be a base is going to swing. He actually loses his life. Melio's having a great round, but he'll finally be silenced. It's all left to him. Cred has missed the first oh. shot and will not get an opportunity for a second. So Defuse comes through. At least it's an expensive round for Polar Ace, and a bomb plant goes down for Livid. But still, at this point, 7 0, they've got to start making a mark. Otherwise, this is just going to be such a high hill to overcome, such a tough wall to get over. And we're really seeing in these first, uh, in this match, as much like we saw in our first match, that there's kind of just a step between these two rosters, right? It's still early. There's definitely a chance for Livid to take that step and make this a really good game, but they need to get started. Yeah, they need to get started as soon as possible because that the cash is starting to kind of mount up here for all the race. Livid now going aggressive, trying to throw the timing off just a little bit. Jonah B sitting in an uncomfortable situation will be falling back off that sandwich position. Now they do have a lot of utility, so they can kind of regain control with that slowly but surely. Gonna be AGM towards B site, drawing first blood. I mean, this man's a beast right now. No matter where he flows, like a butterfly, he's finding kills, no problem. He really is living up to the, the top billing that we gave him in this game. I mean, it's, how could he deliver any more perfectly? Jonah P is doing well with the op himself, but this time it's not gonna work out. That's a nice shot from Millie. That's a player down. Might be the opener they need here. It's gonna force them into a commitment, or rather, tempt them into a commitment. And there's still a pretty nice swing potential from base. Does he spot the toes? He does now, and that's a kill. Took him a second to realize it. That'll give the distraction that AGM needed to pluck another out of Tuton. And it's Mikhail once again, all alone, just trying to get something done behind enemy lines, Roy. Wow, they just pretty much kissed inside that smoke when Mikhail comes out on top. Base's head is decapitated. 40 seconds left on the clock. That gives at least some element of confusion here for Polar Ace players to figure out what Mikhail's up to. There's so many things that Mikhail could be doing as long as he kind of delays around a little bit that will split the defense up. But it seems like Polar Ace is settling on one player towards back lanes. That's going to be AGM by himself with the AWP. A pretty smart decision. This duel right here was going to come down to timing. Oh, made a step. I think Mikhail may probably heard that scope as well. So there's, there's a chance right here. And he has a smoke and a Molotov. So the bomb plant could definitely go down. No problem. Sometimes the timing bites. Is he going to clear this? He does and actually finds the kill. That was bold from Mikhail. Now he's turned it into a 1v1 clutch situation. He'll readjust to make sure that this wow. plant is safe. He would have had it either way, but the timing works out for him. Now it's Picky and Mikhail 1v1. It all comes down to this. Mikhail has done so much to bring this round back for his team, and he might be able to tap it all the way through. Taking a very passive angle, he wants to make Picky try and clear him all the way out. And it's all going to come down to who has the positioning, who gets who's back. And it's Mikhail with a clothesline shot as he peeks at just the right moment. Picks up an off as well, and Livid are finally on the board off the back of that heroic performance. That, that was almost theatrical to watch. That was beautiful. Played almost to perfection. I mean, Mikhail seemed like he was in full control of that at all times, especially with that kill on base through the smoke. As soon as he got that kill in the smoke in T-Con, I was like, whoa, okay, that, that, that changes the dynamic quite a bit. That's kind of like the pivot player taken out. And then it's like the two remaining players are kind of left isolated on extremities, right? But the, the kill on uh, AGM, though, what is yeah. that? That was dirty. I don't know how he won out that duel. As soon as he's go setting up to peek into the angle, I was just expecting the op shot to come in and silence it. But just the insta shot and, and just destroy. I mean, when you have the confidence to peek into an op like that, an angle that you know somebody's holding, and remove them from the situation, take them out of the equation, that's a huge asset for your team. Definitely. Definitely. Big round. Unfortunately for Livid, though, it does come at a big cost because now that their full money is invested. Luckily, they do have a massive round loss bonus. So even if they lose this one, they will still have the max loss. So they will get 3,400 back if they can get a bomb plan in this round at any point. That is another buy round coming up. So there's a, there's actually quite a bit of pressure on Polar Ace. Polar Ace, yeah, they're, they're, they're the fully invested. Yeah, exactly. They're fully invested. If they drop this round right here, that could be Livid making a comeback here in the later part of this half. 
that's uh that's odd and that speaks to just how expensive it is to hold on train in terms of utility you've got to dump that utility immediately you start to lose a couple bodies suddenly you're reinvesting round after round even if it looks like you're winning pretty comfortably so this could be interesting here's the window open and it all comes down to that serious hero play from mikhail so we'll see if the, the team can bring it through, can really deliver on the promise. That's a nice opener. And the second swing as well. The duo opens up the B-bomb site. And that should be a bomb plant at least secure in a great close plant uh, positions. Jonah P tries to get aggressive to shut down the possibility. And that turns out to just be punishing for him. Now it's Shunk and Base who are completely separated. One playing around the ladder and one all the way back in CT. We're going to have to try and bring this through. And this is a great situation for Livid. They might actually prompt the save call pretty quickly. Yeah, this is best case scenario. I mean, Mikhail has one player to his right right here. Shunk. I think they, yeah, they're already setting up for the save. They know their money's pretty much limited. They need all the weapons they can save right here. There it is. The fallback call has been made. And this is best case scenario for Livid as well. Keeping four players here. That's... Very, very ideal. Good job towards the B side. I mean, that was very well played. Just the openers went perfectly. At least Shock will get himself an AK. A little bit of a party favor, but here's the road back in. We were saying they were just on the cusp of making this a competitive game. Well, they found the perfect time to do so. They're going to have at the very least, or at the very most, a broken buy and more than likely a full save, uh, apart from these two rifles, out from Polar A's. And now they've got an opportunity to run it back. AGM and Picky might just want to keep that money healthy to try and get the double ops set up back up. They certainly want the single op to be able to play with here. And Rivet Gaming, here's the opportunity. Here is the window of opportunity. Definitely. This is it. They have to pick up this round. They can run away with at least a few more rounds right here. And that will kind of bring things back. If they can finish even 10 5 or 9 6, 8 7. That'd be awesome finishes all around. But it's going to be early control for Livet towards T-Con. They're not really holding too tightly, though. They're, they're kind of letting it they hang a little bit. Keeping eyes on it. Nothing big deal. They know that Polar Ace's economy is pretty much in shambles here. So they're just trying to figure out where these two remaining weapons are first before they kind of commit. I like this position from Jonah P. It both serves as kind of a, a potential thorn in their side. And also an early warning system for his teammate, Shonk, who's all the way back. So now they know that there's a player swinging. Problem is, there's also an op watching. So Shonk looks for the player who's low, and he gets op by the player who's high. That is a nice counter setup out from Livid. And they're just holding, waiting for Polaris to play into their hands. And that's worked out beautifully for them. It's just going to be base who's tucked in at the bottom of the ladder, who has a rifle. And he's going to sit here still like a statue and either try and do some damage or bring this rifle through in the next round. So Livid, they're going to continue to run down the clock, because why not? But they should have an opportunity here to take virtually a clean round. Yeah, five players alive is... It would be a great turnaround here for Livid. Molotov well placed. Just out of the region. I he caught him towards the end. Oh, he heard it. Melio heard that. Oh, it's going to be an Melio. awkward engagement here. Backpedaling. He's waiting for that. He hears the footstep. He knows exactly what's going on. That's such a hard read and so well done. Bomb's going to be planted now. Base is like, well, that's that's the end of the round. That's it. I've been sitting in ladder room this entire game, and I'm just going to keep sitting in ladder room. Why not? Keep the AUG alive into the next. Give yourself something at least. But that's really well played from Livid. I mean, they barely moved a muscle for a minute and a half of that round, and it paid off beautifully. Yeah, train's, train's one of those maps where patience is, is great, but base has been spotted and he has no escape from this position. I mean, that's a feels Pepe for base. I mean, he's sitting in that ladder room like, hey, please, sir, may I have some kills? And not a single soul comes to him, Just except he... <laughs> oh, oh you were so patient that whole round, base. Why then? <laughs> What are you doing, base? No, no, I'm just kidding. That's that's really unfortunate timing. But there it is, livid. Now they're now that kind of the cash flow is in their hands. They're the ones that have a lot of economic pressure. But I think their loss bonus is coming to an end shortly here. So pull the race. Important round coming up, but they're not working with much. Limited on the utility, limited with actually no kits at all in play, and even AGM is kind of rocking a bit of a glass cannon himself. This is definitely much weaker. That loss of utility as well is tough to play with on train. We'll see how they can compensate. It's looking like, again, Livid are going to show some patience, but this time they get a little more aggressive in towards the B-Halls. The understanding is that because this is going to be such a kind of shoestring buy for Polar Ace and so much rides on it, Livid can get a little bit pushier with their positioning, assuming that maybe that bull play is not quite coming out, and it's well-read from them. So now Utility is going to be dumped on towards B. 
they're not really grouped up, so there's not a hard commitment, but they're trying to bait out what little counter utility Polar Ace has. And there's just so little on their belts that they're holding it till the last possible second. And now that's one player who's out. That's Quinn who's going to be walking through the smoke. This could really punish him, and he'll move right into a kill. Picky has that dead to rights. They maybe tried to get a little bit too cute there, and it really was punished early. Yeah, I'm not against these kind of plays, but I really don't feel like this is the right timing for it. I mean, they, surely they must know that Polar Race's economy is pretty much limited right now. They're taking advantage of that. There it is. Ladder control, ladder control is traded out. Base is removed. The life of Huynh, and it's now down to a 4 versus 4, though. But God, GM, he's holding that cross with AWP. Well-placed flashbang and well-placed utility is going to push him back. And that is a free sight. They have to get rid of Shock first, though. Millie will do exactly that. It was right next to each other, but it ultimately turns up in his favor. He's so very low now, but if Picky doesn't check it deep, it won't matter. And he's not going to check it deep, so he'll get blindsided by the low health player. Somehow manages to find a kill before that all goes down. But despite the fact that Incred and Millie have about 20 HP to rub between them, it's not going to matter because AGM's a glass cannon op, and he has no business taking that kind of fight. So the op's going to get saved. It'll live to fight another day he hopes mikhail's certainly going to try and prevent him from having that long and healthy uh life that he so craves so agm will make sure that that is not going to happen so the op will be saved through at least that's a, a bit of a silver lining for polar ace that's a, bit, that's a big silver lining though that's a big weapon it has yeah the question is what can they put around it uh, it's not going to be much i mean they're limited on the money three thousand average pretty much the agm could armor up right here at least light armor up no problem they will have the loss bonus yeah, so there's probably just going to be pistols and armor for most players. Maybe a bit of utility, maybe a kit on one of the players. But I think it'll, for the most part, it'll just be upgraded to pistols, shock with an eagle, no armor. All around a pretty good amount of money, but they really didn't leave themselves with much for the next round, though. I, I don't know how to feel about that. But Livid, this is a great comeback. I mean, they're, they've already picked up four rounds with room for more. You're seeing aggression come out from the big gun. They've got to try and get something, so AGM's taking that early peek in towards T-Con. Earlier, we saw... Polar Ace really assert control in towards Decon using utility. This time, they don't have that luxury. So they'll go with a uh, less refined weapon. They'll go straight with the AWP, just try and bully it. No utility available. Pistols are all that is left to defend over on B. There's already players in aggressive spots, so Mikhail's going to snatch Jonah P as soon as he pops over the top of that lap. That'll at least bring the AWP over to support, but as soon as the AWP over comes over to support this way, a kill comes the other direction. So once again, Livid showing super amounts of patience in these anti-eco rounds, and it is paying off beautifully for them. I, I think there's going to be an adjustment here from Polar Ace, where they're going to play one of these eco rounds just super passive and just group on a site, and Livid may run into trouble because they haven't been poking for this information early. Right. Yeah, but so I far it's working nice. Yeah, I was honestly just thinking the same thing. I mean, at some point, Polar Ace will pick up on this pace from the Frenchies, right? I mean, it seems to be a pretty consistent pace, kind of default up. Sight take happening around the 32nd mark, which, once again, we're seeing right now almost just on schedule. Flashbangs are now coming out. They're walking straight into AGM's AWP. Only able to find one kill before his teammate on site is removed. AGM opportunity missed. Unfortunately, that was a big kill. That was an opportunity he could not afford to miss. And at least he shuts down. Big with a deagle up close and personal but he's not very healthy and from the side he goes down and it is down to agm which he'll obviously most likely just save this awp maybe look for an exit kill but now he's just gonna go for the safest option get out of there get out of the considering site. what you were talking about at the beginning of the round where with how they've left themselves so little cash for utility and such things i like this you gotta try and keep something up he can drop a gun give somebody an opportunity to get a full belt of utility give them something to work with at the very least the problem, though, is Livid are back in this. You were saying a 10-5 half is good considering how it started out. Well, they're looking like they want a whole lot more than that. 7-5, and, and they're looking like they could run this back to a pretty even scoreline, which, right. considering it, the circumstances, real nice. I mean, not only the circumstances, but the fact that this is T-Side Train, right? Yes. Like, this is... Yes. T-Side Train is by no means an easy... easy. It's, it's very difficult, actually. But the fact that they already have five rounds coming from a 7-0 deficit, that's massive. I like that a lot. But there it is. The AUGs, the AWP, the full utility. It's here for Polar Ace. Unfortunately, they only do have two kits, and those are not well placed. But actually, I like this a lot from Livid. Switching up the pace early on quickly right here. Smoke flashes everywhere and caps little chaos on the outside control. That's 
perfect held angle from Livid as well. And now they're onto the site. The utility is being flexed and the damage is being done. Jonah P doesn't have the timing for the office piece, so he gets dropped. And Shank can only find one before being chased out. And this was the temple breaker we needed. We were talking about how slow they were moving. They mixed that up and it just cracks the defensive polar ace. They crumble before it. They were not prepared. And this round is lost right from the get-go. So Picky, full utility belt, armor, aug, everything he could want except the round. <laughs> I mean, just that, that hurts. Moves around. He's trying to get over to the to the uh, op of AGM, presumably, and try and save that. And no chance. They are watching it. They are ready for the clothesline. As soon as he peeks around old bomb train, he is dead. Dead as a doornail. So this is interesting. Op four step from AGM again. Just yeah, he got on he, Shonk. Yeah, he had seven point five thousand, so he didn't drop a weapon for the for anyone last round. So he he actually has enough money to buy op and light armor and still buy in the next round. That's not gonna be no problem at all for him. Jonah up close and personal, finding one kill, doing a lot of damage, but do they expect Pinky to be on top? Pinky finds one, a second one, and he gets to keep his life for now. How do they let him get a full clip back in? Picky playing this perfectly. Now he spots the ankles. It's Justin Cred who will be moving down with the op straight into the counter op angle. So Polar Ace, they don't get it done in the last, but they certainly do here. So we're headed into the last round of half. And they've got the double op. They have a scout that they can upgrade it, and I fully expect Chunk to. There he goes. So they're going to have everything they need for this last round. And if they can get it to 9-6, it's not a catastrophe. But still, this has been rock solid for Livid. Yeah, shaky start. But the, even, the, even the first seven rounds were kind of close on the on the gun rounds. It yeah. certainly felt that way. And then once the economy cracked, it just fully crumbled. The foundation yeah. was never built yeah. like a sandcastle. Definitely. So I mean, it's the aggression that came out early on from towards Ivy that helped out a lot. And this is, once again, AGM looking to contest towards that part of the map. He spotted one player crossing over, which means that there's definitely a second one there, considering that was a run boost. Now, some of the utility here will come out as a counter for Polar A, so the round will slow down just a tiny little bit. AGM finds a frag all the way from back green into Tcon. That's Quinn's head had removed. That's incredible. was literally waiting for this peak, and the fact that he misses the first shot just gives this opportunity to AGM to hit one then the other. With an AWP like AGM on the other side, you really just can't afford him that chance because he will press the advantage. And so that's a big kill to find up and a big follow-up. And now it's just two players left to try and find a little bit of space. And AGM is just going to stick here. Flash or no flash. Try and get back through. That hop. Oh, has him dead to rights. Millie's down and that's the bomb committed. Now they can just group up and watch this. There's a smoke at least for Melio to try and carve this out. Try and provide a little bit of space. And we saw some heroic clutches earlier in the half. But Melio, he's got it all to do here in round number 15. He'll just go straight out the smoke. There's the first. Can he get the second? They're chasing back. They're not looking his direction. But Picky's there to support. And it will be 9-6. to six. A strong start from, uh, from Polar Ace. Then a great comeback from Livid, but the last two rounds do fall the way of the Arctic team. Okay, okay, nine six, pretty standard T side half, all things considered. I mean, if you remove the alcohol, if you remove kind of the round to round pattern right there, it is it's a decent finish for Livid. All the race, they're also pretty comfortable. I mean, nine rounds coming into the second half, you're a lot of room for error. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure here on the pistol round, but ooh, this is interesting. Polar Ace, no utility, all Glocks, all armor. That is interesting. This is a tough map to do that with a full duel. Especially as they're moving into a pretty heavy stack towards Ivy. This must be a hard read from Livid. They were so ready for it. Base coming out of T-Con will at least do a little bit of damage and isolate one of the players and allow his teammate space to get that bomb out. So he's brought back what could have been a completely lost pistol round off of the back of his Glock. And he's looking for more as well. He's getting forward and he spotted one right by T-Con. Trying to get out, trying to slip actually back into Tcon to allow his teammate time to get towards the site. Mikhail's figuring out his reposition. He does not want to get run down here. This is tricky, tricky, and everything slows down. It was a very quick start, a lightning fast start. Players dropping left and right, but now in the mid round, he gets slow. Oh, the backstab from Incred catches base with his head turned, and Jonah P doesn't know which direction to look. He's got to find one of these fights and isolate them in order to get the bomb down. And it looks like they might think he's slipping away to B. Yeah, they just want to cover his bases, right? Because, I mean, he knew that one of the players was in T-Con, and now in Kred's position, it's compromised. So, clearly, there's a gap in Z, right? That's what they're assessing right now. But 
Mikhail, he might have went a little bit too preemptively. 35 seconds left on the clock. Incred still has the outer courtyard cut off. So if, if Jonah crosses towards ladder or sight, Incred will have that information and the potential to kill him. And there it is. The tap comes in. Nice shot. Clean first shot to the head. That's clean. And Jonah P is removed and Livid Gaming pick up a, a very important round, actually. It was a little hairy. But they, uh, they locked it down early at Ivy, and then they bring it through. And that was just a situation where Jonah P had no idea where they're playing from, so he's almost dueling with phantoms, right? That's so tough on that outer yard. So many potential positions and angles somebody could be holding. He's trying to clear him to figure out if he can get a safe plant, and that leaves him exposed from the long angle. That that hurts. Yeah. So, livid. Opportunity to get back in. Yeah, Polar Ace down to just Glocks. This is should be, you know, just to tap it in. Just give it a little tappy-tappy. A little bit. Don't need, don't need to get take, you really don't need to get creative here if you're living. Just hold strong. Don't really overextend. Don't really overstay your welcome. Get that information. Use your weapons. And it should be easy cleanup. Hopefully for livid. If they're thinking we can keep five players alive. Four players alive is good as well. Anything below that is a uh, failure. Around Based around. on how how slow we saw them play in the first half in their Antiquos, right? Just holding back towards the halls, waiting for the aggression to come to them. I kind of expect to see a lot of patience out from them in this. It's interesting. We saw uh, previously when there was the SMG, there was a bit of a push in towards Tcon to take control. They're not even dealing with it in this one. Uh, Livid, they're just going to keep the SMGs. Distant ranges with them, all things considered. But it'll work out. Now there's the movement towards outer, and they are completely blanking for base. It's all just Shank who finds nothing but a hail of bullets and a lost round. And you were saying they need to keep it clean. I don't think a single player got touched that round. Hey, that's Mr. Clean Clean, baby. No, oh, now they're... It's a bit awkward for Livid. Yeah. They, they kind of went for the safe buy, which, again, is no problem. But you kind of still have those weapons leaking into this round. So you have SMGs of FAMAS versus 5 AKs and almost full utility. Missing a little bit on some of the crucial utility pieces. But overall, it's going to be a fast base coming out from Polar Race. But they have a mountain of utility to get by before anything can happen here. Uh, they're only sending base to lead the from away. base. He's got the blind side, though. And the second... Oh, turns away from it too quickly. He's punished for it. The melee on site. And Jonah P is trying to find heads. Only going to get one before being silenced. And Mikhail could have the perfect backstab. Spots AGM coming out. Commit to the fight. That's going to allow AGM at least another breath. But he's quickly dispatched of. It's all on Picky, who's got two. Melio's very low. All it will take is one bullet. And as he rounds the corner... <laughs> He doesn't pull the trigger. Melio has him with the SMG. The lack of head armor does picky in. I have to imagine. That was just so quick. I can't imagine he had a helmet on. No, he actually had a helmet on. That was just, Yeah, it was just a... Elton him. Ah. I like the movement from Melio. It looked like it was kind of a snap to the head. That was quick, but livid. That was that was kind of a bonus round for them. They had like, what, three SMGs of Moss and an AUG in that mm -hmm. round? And they came out with two players alive, so they're they're laughing right now. Zona Eagle, nice shot. Cred answers back. But still, an early pick coming out here for Polar Ace. That only helps things, makes the bomb plan just a tiny little bit easier for them. Of course, the name of the game is that cash, cash, money, baby. There's the second shot with the scout. It's been picked off one teammate and handed to the next. A little bit of damage here, but here's the Ivy presence. And AGM actually wins out the duel with the P250. So that's a rifle potentially retrieved at the very least a deagle for him to work with. He knows they're going to be looking right at his spot. This is a 1v1 with a rifle retrievable. AGM has made this viable. AK on AK. No armor, but he's just going to have to find the flank, and with a minute five to work with, he can completely lose himself on sight. He's going to begin the long journey to go back and find Bomb, and that's going to take a lot of the time off the clock because he's got to clear a ton of angles, but Mikhail has no idea where this Bomb is, no idea where AGM yeah. is coming from. He's hearing ghosts. He's seeing phantoms. He's got to figure out where he wants to move. Oh, no. Mikhail's hearing all this. Mikhail's in the perfect position for this. He's hearing all this happen, but I think AGM is baiting him. No. Oh, oh, my God. I feel like both of them knew exactly what was happening. That was, that was nuts. That was crazy. No. Oh, that could have worked out so many different ways. Yeah. I, I would have liked AGM to kind of just let the paranoia seep in, though. I mean, he had so much time left. He had, like, what, 40 seconds, 45 seconds when he's running in yes. white halls? Like, that, he didn't really need to press it that much. But a, a good read nonetheless, but it's going to go into Livid's favor. You know, almost, almost secured by AGM, though. That was nuts. I, yeah, that's...
That's tough. Kale with a nice early pick to set it up as well. That's the way to get started here. Polar Ace not looking good on their T side, even with guns in hand. They're going to have them back again, but dropping a player is going to make that a little bit risky. There's a player just waiting in the B hall, and that's Mikhail. Base is looking for him, but that hop down is going to be all the indication that Mikhail needs. He's going to win out the duel, and this is great damage early on. Two kills found. It's a graveyard out towards B, and some Polar Ace. They're just going to hit A. They've got a player warmed up, but it's AGM with an AWP, and that's not the most maneuverable of guns. He's still going to find the first, just obliterating Millie, nailing him to the train car, but they've got so many more kills to find here, Roy. It's tough sledding. Yeah, there's so many faces, and Melios from behind red, able to find one kill from both angles. One from the front, one from behind, and Mikhail, the cavalry has arrived. The rotates perfectly timed, and he catches AGM from the side of the head. And it is livid with an 11-9 to lead. I mean, this was a 7-0 for Polar Ace at one point, right? Now we're, oh, yeah. you know, 15, 20 minutes later, we're 11-9. I, I, if I'm the Frenchies right now, I'm I'm comfortable. I'm laughing, right? You have so much room for error. You have a good amount of money. You have Polar Ace down to a kind of an eco. They have, yes, pistol upgraded armor, some utility to try to get that bomb plant. But as long as you're able to secure this round and keep the three players alive, you're, you're laughing. They need a hero around from the Polar Ace side. I, I've been so impressed by Mikhail this game. He had, obviously, the one crazy clutch round. That was huge. But just generally, he's rock solid. He's finding one kill, falling back, finding the second kill, mm -hmm. making sure that he's never at a disadvantage, that he's always playing his position the right way. And I'm I'm very impressed. Obviously, he's not a player I've got to watch that much. We saw him already in one game of the Winners League, but he's looking great in this one. It's going to be Smokes down to secure a bomb plant, and one player knocked a little bit low, but they're still around to cause damage. The bomb will, in fact, go down, but the nades are going to soften them up, and the rifle should do the rest of the work. It's just Mikhail trying to get across, trying to rip their heads from shoulders and secure that post plant, and that's exactly what they'll do. So the bomb plant, or the bomb defuse can come in, rather. A little bit more money for Polar Ace to play with, but Livid, they put that three-round chunk in. They've got that comfortable lead, that cushion, and it just keeps building. Yeah, that was well played, too. Five players alive on a B retake, that's... Not bad at all. I like that. And yeah, Mikhail, man, he's, he's just, I mean, just watching him play, like he's kind of flowing the right way, rotating to the right spots. But, uh, you know, it's totally off topic and side note, but I'm surprised the B anchors don't have lined up HE nades for that default position. I always see people miss that nade and kind of surprised people don't have a lineup for it from like every possible angle you can think of, like cloud, back of the bomb site, Z. They should have lineup nades for that. Anyways, it does feel regardless. like a fundamental. Yeah, really, on top of the Z. Above the smokes, above the flash, is able to take down Picky while the remaining players are now trying to make their way onto that A site. There's so much defense players left. Just looking for these spots. That's a nice couple of kills for Sean. He's really ripping this site open. The bomb was going to be planted, but that backstab from Melio just really ruins all their plans. They'll rip him from the server to make sure that that backstab's no longer a potential, and that will now allow the plant to come in. So finally an advantage here for Polar Ace. They've been really struggling on their T-side, but this might be the round they needed to get it done. The problem is there's so much money still on Livid that it may not matter too much. Millie is pushing forward with the op. They can certainly commit to this. They want to take guns out of the hands of Polar Ace and make it so difficult for them going forward. Oh, and that Molly was ill time that just cues off Millie for exactly where he needs to check. But now the off all alone. How can he hope to get it done? One trade at the very least is nice. As again, trims that economy. But it's going to be a round finally given up. Polar Ace, this is their first round of the second half. Yeah, I mean, I honestly could have seen Livid kind of saving and still going for the exit frags and probably doing the equal amount of economic damage without taking as much back, but... They still have the money. They still have the full buy right here. Triple logs, double AWPs, no problem. Full kits, full utility. The Livid's comfortable, but their money is running thin here. Fast play once again, going to P. And out to the Olaf position. He's all by himself right now. This might be a ruse, though. I think they're heading over towards the B site. It does feel that way. Unfortunately for Livid, they're rooted and another player to support. That's going to be the op as well in Cred's hands. Going back to the slightly further back setup we saw work very well for them previously. It's going to be Mikhail and Cred. That time it was against Nico, though, Roy. Oh, and that's a nice kill to distract focus, but Jonah P immediately gets traded. So here's the hit coming in, and they're just entering the blender. Mikhail, once again, so solid, gets two before he's traded. Bomb will be planted here, but the retake should be very sudden indeed. 
can ask more for that from that anchor and Melio and Incred able to find one each quickly in succession and it is once again livid on that B retake and that's so strong but man Mikhail so consistent this game like we can't stress that enough two kills from a B anchor solo solo it's it's solid it's just so solid it's so it's reliable you can that's what you want out of an anchor right that's what you want out of that b anchor it's just you know exactly what you're gonna get out of him round after round you know that if there's anything to get out of a round he's gonna find it and that's such an asset such an asset for a team now 13 to 10 with the economy right on the ropes for polar ace of course the economic reset isn't a thing anymore considering they had so much lost bonus it stays around they've at least got something to work with but they're running out of rounds they're running out of attempts definitely like, it seems what like the, you... the aggression is also relentless right now from Livid. If, yes. if I'm Polar Ace, I, I don't even know what the option is. They're, they're being contested randomly towards Ivy. They're being contested randomly towards Ladder and T-Con. It's like always different, always dynamic from the French-Canadian side. It's, it's pretty good, but I would like to see more of that kind of slow, aggressive, you know, defaulting from Polar Ace. Like, like as they're doing right now, slowly gaining ground towards Ivy, kind of just pushing the boundaries of their safe space and... Setting up AGM for those, you know, comfortable duels with AWP. I'd like to see a little bit more of that coming out. Jonah P, he'll be leading the way and he might catch me off guard. The flashbang comes out and really caught off completely. They don't realize there's a second player here though and that's going to isolate them at Ivy. AGM now can't cross and he doesn't have a players to support anymore to take the aggro. But he's just going to try and dig out the spot. Doesn't have the timing on the shot. The flashbang is good. At least the trade is there. And now they've worked their way forward on site. This is so unfortunate for the livid players. Picky is a wrecking ball. Just ripping them one by one. Mikhail, if he drops down this ladder, he's going to find a rude surprise. Shonk. That's exactly what he'll do. Shonk actually moved away right on the ladder drop. But he has it on the second swing. So Polar Ace, second round on the board. Four alive this time. That might be critical. Actually going to allow them to get a pretty good buy in the next. This is and safe. the economy... Where did it go for Livid? It's all gone. I mean, their rounds haven't been that clean though, right? I mean, yeah, they've been winning mm -hmm. rounds. They've had some clean rounds in the earlier earlier part of the half, but now it's like, ooh, we're sitting tough. And remember those two weapons they threw away in that retake? Like that could have been a full buy right here had they kept those. That, that always comes back to bite you when you're overconfident. Like you're comfortable, like, hey, we have a lot of money. Let's just go for this. But it always comes back at some point. The ghost of bad egos past. <laughs> comes back it's like screw ebenezer scrooge he's haunting you look at what your past actions caused well they'll be biting themselves for that later uh but for now they just got to figure out what they're actually going to bring to bear in this round incred and melio maybe drop upgraded pistols i don't expect to see that much of an investment or i would hope not to see that much of an investment right because they're doing well when they have all the guns Definitely. when they're ready to just fuel and have the economy so give yourselves the best chances have as many of those rounds as possible no sense throwing a, a, a crappy half buy against the wall here and seeing if it works. Yep, there it is. Pistols, mustache man, and T spawn. I always need a mustache man, Darth. You don't know anything about that, though, right? Man. I don't. I can throw <laughs> the worst mustache that's like known to man. It's really abysmal. <laughs> I'm uh, just kidding, man. You're beautiful. A beautiful, but very hairless. Very hairless. It's going to be aggression out the B halls, and that's a player drop. Base only gets one. He was not expecting that bald faced aggression. Maybe he should have been. So now that's a rifle to play with for Emilio. And Picky, oh, he overlooks when spot, and that's a second rifle retrieved. This is getting very dangerous. There's no armor even invested into the round. But you just fix this chain train of later. the remaining three players can still games. do damage. Jonah P and AGM, they've got to lock this down. That's going to be a ball we set right into a spoke. It's a nice bait and switch, though, and Jonah P can set it up. But Melio, he's still here, and he's still dangerous with that AK in hand. Finally, he'll be mopped up, but two players surviving against no armor eco. That's tough. Yeah, that's definitely tough. I mean, neither of these teams uh, have much room for error at this point, right? Like, all, all the money they can save, all the money they can kind of hold on to at this point is going to play a massive factor. Like, being reset this late into the game is, is surely death, right? It's There's no way out of it, so they have to tie it up here. But there it is, Livid picking up that buy. Double op setup coming out. Limits it on the utility and no kits in hand. So that B retake, that might come back to... If it ends up in that kind of scenario, that might not work out for Livid as well. They're, they're kind of countering the Ivy control, right? That's been kind of their 
Weak point Shank lurking out once again. This is spotted. He's unable to find a success in the duel. Picky and Cred and Tracer happening back and forth. That is three versus three. And now the site takes coming in. That's a big chill to find for Picky. He goes over. The player's trying to drop a smoke to keep himself alive in the Molly. And so there's no gun available to duel. This swing, though, from Ivy as the smoke fades. He's going to get one. And the second they line up for Melio. And now Melio and Mikhail have only one player to deal with. It's AGM. And the smoke will go down for the bomb. There's no way he's going to be able to deny this. He's trying to just throw a molly, but I don't even think Mikhail's exposed to it. The smoke will extinguish it. And that's going to be the round of 14th for Livid. Wow. Defuse comes through the full 10 seconds. And HEM is dueling. He'll at least stay alive with his life. But the round slips from their fingers. Oh my god. This is... this. <laughs> oh, I'm nervous for them. This is an important timeout. I'm really happy to see this one come out. I mean, they, they have three timeouts left. They have four timeouts total, but they're only using their first one now. So that's a bit surprising. Regardless, this is a lot of the economy will be used up here. Luckily for Polar Ace, they're, they're all right. They have money. They might even be able to have enough money if they can get a bomb plan for another round. But... Livid, on the other hand, they're only able to keep yeah. one player alive in that round, which means that they're fully invested here. Not only fully invested, but they weren't able to recover the AWP. They weren't able to recover an AUG. So it's going to be all rifles, no scopes here for the, for the French-Canadian side. That's, that's sketchy. It's going to be awkward, too. I don't think it's going to be... Oh, we'll see. I mean, Huynh's going to be limited, right? I don't believe anyone can drop him a gun. So they're, they're figuring it out right now. There's an SMG being tossed around. There's a FAMAS to allow them to get some utility up it's gonna be a little bit shoestring and this is a critical swing if they get broken here if they wind up having to take an eco all of a sudden we're looking at going the full 30 and very possibly an ot game well i can only <laughs> this has been a pretty even game right you would you agree that's yeah. been like pretty back and yes. forth if you disregard the kind of the shriek in the first half but i can only imagine how crazy overtime between these two teams is gonna be oh my god Ops on ops on ops is what I'm personally hoping for. Quinn's gonna take this position towards the ladder, but he's being dinked up on the entry. He was trying to get close to that SMG. He'll never have the opportunity as Picky cuts his life a little bit short. So now they'll push a player up towards the E box. That's some cred. But the rest have to sort of adjust. This IV aggression is the answer, but Melio drops, and now Jonah P should know he's there. So Jonah P's just holding for the swing, and Melio has to get the heck out of dodge. So that element of the plan, it falls by the wayside. And a lot could come to Mikhail here. He could have the opportunity if he finds the timing. He's upper. They're not going to check for him. They're not going to clear him. And he's actually calling in the rest of his teammates. So it's a full gamble towards this site. And the bomb's committed. It's in. This backstab could be huge oh, for Mikhail. Mikhail. Here's the plant come out. There's the timing. Base now down in such a strong spot for Mikhail. Picky on the flank. That's huge in towards the Z position. Going to grab two to their back turned. And they just melt the remaining livid players. And this, this was a very Ooh. unfortunate loss for Livid. One, that round was crazy. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone, either of us could talk fast enough to catch everything that was going on in that round. There was so much going on. Like, all players were split in all directions. But the bigger issue here for me is, at Livid, this is a double reset. I mean, these are not common in the new meta. So to find that towards the end of this game, near the 30th round, this is... <laughs> they might have to forfeit the match points to pull the race. There it is they now. Really the aggression's might. coming out. Five stack. I always love to see this one. It's always pretty nutty. As soon as they realize what's happening, it's just a feast. <laughs> a feast for the senses. A feast for the ecos. There will be one player, Jonah P, who's unfortunately sacrificed the five-man stack. But now it's 14 to 14. And as you said, double eco. Quinn's actually bought up a scout. That's a pretty big investment, all things considered. He's knocking down pretty low. And it'll presumably be glass cannon behind it. So they're going to hamper themselves a little bit in the next buy, even with what they're bringing into this one. But this this could be map point with a, a slightly hampered buy for the remaining livid players. I don't know. After so much work that they've done in the second half, after how good they've looked, to give it away here, oh, that would hurt. That would hurt a lot, yeah. And look, look at the scores as well. It's pretty even. I mean, two players over the 20s. You have two players sitting at 19 and 16 on both teams. And then the th like, kind of like bottom fragging player is kind of like near that 13, 12 mark. Although, Huynh does have seven assists. Let's look at that more stat. Let's see who's like playing really good support here. Of course, we always have to give credit to the support players. Melio, 23 flashes. Ace sitting at 21. That is nuts. Gotta hit those flashes. Eco gods in the server. Eco gods.
And even though Quinn's not sitting at such a high kill total, as you said with those assists, he's got a little bit of uh, the ADR going on. You know, he's, he's, he's pulling his weight. He's uh, contributing. This is really going to come down to the wire. And the stars of the server, I would say, have really been AGM and Mikhail on the other side. I 100% agree with this game. We should see some more of that. Yeah, definitely. It is upgraded pistols, a little bit of armor. Actually, only one player picking up that's Millie. A Millie, a Millie. But it's going to be tough going right here for Livid. There's lots of Molotovs and smokes and flashbangs are raining in, and Kret's position has been compromised, and Shonk is up close and personal. And those flashes are so effective. Ooh, nice trade from Win. Okay, the scout's doing a little bit of damage. He's going to slip back in towards Z as well. And withdraw. Bomb will be planted here, and this is the full post plant. So it's just going to be the setup from Livid to try and do as much damage as possible. Maybe take some of those guns away, give themselves something more to work with to battle for overtime. But post plant, I mean, you have to imagine at this point that we're going, I mean, we're certainly going to full 30 one way or another. Yeah. But that Livid are going to be on the back foot here. They've given up map point, presumably. And that we're going to be uh, seeing the battle for overtime. Millie, it's a nice dig shot, though. He disagrees with my assessment. He wants to win it all here. Picky says no. Nails two. Can't quite find the third. Quinn Scout's still doing damage, but there's just no chance he's going to get the defuse now. He doesn't even have the time. He's trying to find another frag, and he's probably just going to die bomb. Yeah, I mean, it's, at this point, economic damage is not even worth it, right? Like, Polar Ace is sitting at, you yeah. know, near 16,000. And they actually do have one player at 16,000, so... They're not really too worried about economic damage. I, I think it was better off if Livid had tried to save one of their weapons here, or at least Millie tried to hold on to that armor, because that would have been an extra kit for them right there. Now they don't have a single one. That is questionable. Oof. It's going to get dangerous when we get to that post plant. It's going to get so very dangerous. Yeah, I do love a, a full buy, though, on the 30th. That's always exciting. It is. This is all crazy. Like, I, there's no professional analysis you could give to this predict how this is going to unfold right now this is a timeout coming out it's a one minute reset everyone's just cooling off taking a deep breath you know like <laughs> and polar races at least they can't lose right that's what they're thinking at this point we can only go into overtime or win double up on the t side too that's interesting Ooh, i wonder interesting. if he's just going to take an initial peak so look there's another ak down in spawn right yeah i wonder if they're going to take an initial peak with that second op try and pick somebody off on the angle and then come back and swap to the ak or if they're actually going to hold it through i mean joda p and agm both do favor the big green gun maybe let's just stick it oh no he drops it now changed his mind agm's going back to the rifle chaos and yeah, i think jonah is just going to take the early peak like you said, he has the best spot, I believe, right? If I'm mistaken, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think I'll just take the T-Con peek and then swap back to AGM. Wait. Okay, okay. They're, they're like, you He's know what? Let's just throw the casters off a little bit right here. <laughs> I love it. He's juggling the gun forward so it's easy to get to. There's the peek. Jonah P had the spawn. He has the kill as well. Incred out immediately. Quinn will pick up the ops so that it lives on at the very least, but they're advancing ground. They're moving straight onto site, and Shonk has been traded. There's a player playing around the bomb train, but he's still losing immediately afterwards. And Mikhail is now alone. He's the hero of the game. Well, now he's got to do it all, and he cannot. So after a very close game, after a huge comeback from Livid, it's all for naught. Polar Ace silenced them in regulation. Yeah. And though we went the distance, it's ultimately a 16-14. Oh, that hurts if you're living. Yeah, I need to take a deep breath. Like, that <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. But, man, I mean, the two players to watch for Polar Ace, we called it, right? We said Picky, we said AGM, and both those players kind of came out on top. I think they were 28 kills, 27 kills, if my brain is still functioning. I'm an old man. I got Alzheimer's probably. But, you know, it's it's an impressive performance. And Mikhail, man, I mean, we, we both, we we're kind of at this point, we we're kind of like beating that nail, right? But it, and it was so he's, consistent. He's impressive. I mean, just the positioning. It's the combination of, like, the positioning and the aim, right? Some players have won. It's that beautiful blend when you have both. He knows where he needs to be, and he knows right. exactly how to hit the shots mm -hmm. to maximize the position. I That's a very impressive player, and he's definitely somebody I'm going to be keeping a close mm -hmm. eye on going forward. Love the way he played train. Yeah, I mean, I, I bumped into some of these players in, uh, I think it was DreamHack Montreal is when I first actually got to meet some of these players on the Livid roster. Of course, in Cred, when I've played against them, like, many, many times in the past, but... Man, like, yeah, Mikhail and even, like, Melio, Tenski, like, all these, like, young French talent. Like, they're they're actually really, really good. And I think in a, in a year or two from now, when they've had, like, a lot of experience under their belts, we're, we're all going to be seeing these players kind of, like, rise to the top in the Canadian scene and probably in the North American scene in general. But, whew. anyways, deep breaths.
We still have a third match coming up, Mike. It's going to be an amazing match. It's going to, it's Lazarus, of course. That is the Swole Patrol roster playing under a new banner. This I think it's the first match ever since the swap over to the pink bird. And uh, it's going to be Hysteria. I mean, I imagine if I'm Hysteria, I'm probably a little bit nervous coming into this matchup. But yeah, yeah it's no kidding. Yeah. I mean, you're against some storied names on the other side, and they're at a boot camp. They're together. They're on land. They've been practicing, getting ready. Mm -hmm for pro league i mean they are geared up everything yeah. should be firing on all cylinders they've got fraud coaching this is nuke as well a map where you're, if you're not prepared you are just going to hit the wall and slide down it i i'm excited to see lazarus in action um this i mean i think this is going to be a treat yeah i i also but we will have that coming up for you guys i think they're already yeah the viewers already done i think they're we don't have full players in the server so we're going to go on a quick like couple minute break right here and we'll be right back, guys. The action is going to start as soon as possible. Of course, the players are already connecting, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere, and we will be right back.